Welcome to the Steel Flyers Sports Monday Wrap-Up Show. We are joined by two of the best. That's right. We got them right here for you. And we're going to get into a bunch of great things. Pearls of Wisdom, he's going to give us all the NHL insight and the latest coaching changes and everything going on for Game 2 of the Stanley Cup. Professor Joe, Joe will get us all caught up on what's going on for the NBA playoffs and the latest happenings on the diamond. And your host, I'm going to get into the NFL and the meat of second week and also some college football, uh, some big news happening there. So let's get right into it with Pearls of Wisdom. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. I'm doing fantastic. I'm loving this uh, summer NHL. That's right. Summer of NHL. So how about that? We got game two happening tonight. Uh, Tampa Bay against Dallas. And uh, what do you think? Um, I was uh, like the last game I was saying uh, I was concerned about how tired Tampa was going to be. And uh, they looked they did look really tired. They looked really tired. Um, so going now to game two, it's uh, we were ta- Joe and I were talking about this before. Like Tampa looked like they outplayed that game. If you look at the stats, out- outplayed Dallas in that game. If you look at the stats, because uh, Tampa outshot them fairly significantly, which Dallas is yeah. wanting to do. Um, yeah. But in that particular game, actually, Dallas pretty much did outplay them most of the game. It was just a third period where they got handed over power play after power play after power play, which is concerning that they re- that Tampa got so many power plays and uh, wasn't able to score and actually have not had a good power play all playoffs. That's very concerning going against a goaltender of Hudobin, Otherwise known as Howie Boulin by me a lot, a lot. Who <laughs> 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 who is playing like a lot of people are saying Tim Thomas. Um, so going into game two now, I just have a feeling that Tampa was tired and uh, that I, I think Cooper is an unbelievable coach. Um, there is a way. There's something I haven't seen people doing with Hadobin that. Um, I would like to see a lot more and that's passing from one end of the ice to the other super quick. Uh, People have been going back to the point, which is what we generally do when we have a hot goaltender because you think, Oh, we're not going to get one past them. So we're going to try to get somebody in front and tip it and all that stuff like that. Common practice, right? Problem is Dallas has some of the best defense in the league to, to come combat that. Um, And they play uh, a cluttered up neutral uh, or center ice slot area. Yeah, yeah, they clog up the neutral zone pretty well. Not just in the neutral zone, but in the right around the slot. They clog that up pretty well. And Hudobin hasn't really been challenged side to side as much as I would like to see. So I was thinking, I'm thinking that in this game coming up, watch for Cooper to come to this realization i really do believe he will and we are going to see especially tampa with the little fresher legs and dallas with a little more tired legs we're going to see a lot of cross ice passing back to to get dallas off there see if we're going to stay Mm -hmm. in the middle here then why don't we play in the corners yeah get them going back and forth back and forth hopefully start chasing a little bit and then that's the way you can get dallas yeah so I think that's kind of what Tampa Bay is. They've got the players to do that. Tampa's got the players that have the skill to be able to play that type of game. So I think we're going to see that. And I think we're going to see Tampa probably take this one. Um, but, again, I don't think a high score is in the in the offing. Until I see who Dobin maybe show some cracks, I, I wouldn't want to go that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Joe, what do you think about that? I was going to say, me and Steve were talking before this. The one caveat to probably is if Stammer's back. Yeah, because yeah. he's been skating. Yeah. yeah. If Stammer's he's, he's back, closer. that probably, I'm assuming, turns into a most likely. Yeah, for, I'd have to say. For Tampa Bay for winning. For Tampa Bay winning, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd have to he say. Brings, uh, he already has been pretty present, even though he kind of tells everyone to talk to Hedman when they try to talk to him because he hasn't been playing. But he's still been pressing and he's, there. he's been into the bubble since they've been here. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I think if he comes back, that's the one thing that would definitely change the line, definitely in favor of Tampa and not a probably. 
Yeah, I would agree with that 100% because that's something that we talked about in our preview show. Uh, and that was something that I think that you brought up too, um, Joe, was the the fact that if you don't get people in front of Hudobin and get him moving from side to side, he he's not that kind of goalie where he's going to be popping around to look and see and you know that kind of thing like that. And they just haven't been able to do that. Yeah. Now we don't you think so. I mean? With how go, whenever anyone's hot, they can sometimes do what they haven't done their entire career. Uh, it also right. that also depends. Whenever anyone's just hot as a firecracker, that confidence makes you do things you never done bef- before. <laughs> so um, that's also we'll just see. Like Tim Thomas was not the most peachy clean greatest career goaltender, but in no. big moments. Clutch. He was going to play like the second coming of Dominic Hoshik half of the time. <laughs> so if you're so if that's yeah. the uh, issue at hand now, then you might just be in a rough situation. Oh, well, his right. was just doubtful. He's listed doubtful. as doubtful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I he he's, will he's look. skating. Yeah, he might not play this game, but you know, look, I, I, I've I think that Dallas is going to continue to put the pedal to metal. I think that Dallas is going to – I think they've, they have found the chink in the armor. And with Point still hobbled, not being completely all the way back, um, Stamkos not being in, I, I'm looking for Dallas to continue on. Um, if Point comes back and plays a little better and, and, and as something that we talked about previously as well, where if his injury becomes better because now they've had a day of rest. You know what I mean? So – there's been some time there in between a game. So they've had some time to, to rest and chill out and whatever, whatever. And the game's not till late tonight anyway. So we're, you know, but I'm looking for Dallas to put the pedal to metal and keep, keep going. Uh, you know what I mean? I, it, this might be their time and we'll see how it goes. Um, I also think Stammer's going to be listed as doubtful, even in the game he's playing. I, I would bet, nine out of ten times he's going to be listed as doubtful and then you're going to find out 10 to 15 before the game oh hey, he's Steve playing Stamkos is playing yeah yeah, that's yeah. Going to be used as a throw off by cooper he's not going to tell you anywhere oh. he gave a little bit of a hint with the tune in to find out type uh, yeah yeah but <laughs> up that, you ain't getting any more from him so yeah or that, if he, or if he listens him as doubtful and he comes out for the warm-ups exactly yeah i think yeah is doubtful in the game he warms up too because that's a mind game thing more than anything else exactly 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 so i i i, I think it's going to be an interesting game though that's for sure um that's for sure um pro some uh, some other things happened this week in the nhl uh we had some uh, coaching changes i believe here happened with uh, the washington capitals hi- hiring peter laviolette yeah Lavi. yeah Lavi is back in the metro oh. yeah <laughs> Uh, I, it's, I've been asked a lot about that. It's hard because to me in Nashville, I want to say this to me in Nashville, Lavia, Lavi looked like he needed a break. I'm a little concerned for him to go right back into coaching this fast, but, uh, um, he was looking pretty disheveled, honestly. Um, okay. So I'm a little concerned, but okay. He did get somewhat of a break. It's possible that he went and got some whatever it is that Lavi needs to be what Lavi can be, because we know what Lavi can be, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if he, he can come fi- He was fired, like, the beginning of the year, though, Yeah. Um, this past season, right? So he's had quite – he's almost had a full year, oh, yeah. almost. Yeah, I, I think it was – was, was he the beginning of the year or the beginning of the calendar year? Calendar. I think be- no, he was the beginning of the, the hockey year. Was he? I don't remember. I don't thought so. That early. But – Anyways, if maybe, it's a pretty know. year, yeah. he maybe just had some time to clear his head or whatever it is and come back with a different – let's just say this. I want to see a different Lavi than I saw at the end of Nashville. I uh, yeah. That Lavi is uh, not healthy for anyone. Well, I think we have already, though. I will say there was an interview. I was talking to you about this, Steve, that was on NHL Network that you unfortunately can't see unless a TSN or Sportsnet also shows it. Um, but he talked like I got my family time. I needed my family time. I need, yeah, so I, I heard he, that like, one too. He got that reprieve that you were hinting at to then yes. go back in and just start kicking butt as a coach. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see a good, healthy, living 
Lavi. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. If it we can like see that's that, be the case. if we can see that coming to Nash, coming to Washington, I think Lavi can do great things with that team. I think uh, Ovechkin will embrace Lavi in that way. People talk about Lavi being a hard ass. Lavi is a fair ass. <laughs> he's, he's simply just going to call it as, you know, yeah. he sees it. And if you don't agree with him, he's cool with that. But yeah. what, whatever you do, don't act like you agree with him or disagree with him and not tell him. That's where Avi doesn't like you and you'll see your ass on the bench. So in other words, don't be a whiny. No, no, no. You know? So <laughs> Interesting way to put that there, Perlo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way to phrase that. Don't be yeah. a... No, no, no. All yeah. right. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's another I mean, technical that's the, term. I'm speaking in this way because that's the way Lavi speaks. That's yeah. the way Lavi is. Lavi's a straight out dude. This is the way he's, he's going to be. And I think he's going to relish this because he relishes working with veterans a lot. And uh, there's he's a, a lot of too. them. Yeah. He did <laughs> he's hint, got he a lot did, of them. He, he did hint at that too. So you're spot on with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. 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 He loves working with veterans a lot. Uh, and I think at this stage of his career, he's not really into wanting to raise up kids anymore. So this to me, and, and Lavi has all through his career, he's been known to have a three year window. So, uh, yeah. He, he has a three-year window, and in those three years, the teams will rock, and then all of a sudden, everything will start to slide. Pretty so um, that I think a lot of that could be because of exhaustion. I think Lavi goes into it so hardcore and then kind of exhausts himself out on the other side. <laughs> Guess what? Washington's got about a three-year window. So um, in that way, in that way, to be like championship level, I would say maybe a three-year lo- 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 window. Even to be with ch- Hopi potentially being a free agent and, you know, uh, Ovechkin, the twilight in his year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> more beneficial than Horn Poe, Yeah, I think it is. I know, I know, I know. I that's more of a <laughs> But yeah, right. so you know what? When I first heard this, I I, I I thought a lot like a lot of people were thinking that Lavi's not the right guy here. But the more oh, no, that I disagree, I disagree. I think Lavi is a great coach for the Capitals because yeah, I think he's going to give them the stability that they have lacked since uh, Trotz was there. You know what I mean? And and he's going to give them a a const a consistent system and a consistent message. Is I what thought, I think. Uh, I think Gallant could have did that. I yeah, think. that's why I was surprised Todd Rooting got hired as an assistant so quickly because he showed no stability whatsoever. The reason their team did good is because they were stacked. I mean, if you didn't do good with that team, you would have had something wrong. Like you, I don't even think it was fair. in the NHL if you did that's not. That's what I mean. Yeah. I don't even think it was fair to Reardon. I don't know how good of a coach he is because they never let him percolate and become – uh, what he what he probably can be? I have no idea. I mean, you're comparing it to, Bear, to one year, one of the greatest coaches of our generation well, leaves after he two, yeah, last year, and then he didn't did this year. So well yeah. this year. <laughs> and when they but, came, but still, they went, they went two years. Was one of the greatest coaches of this generation, and then you bring some young guy that's that's never coached before into our room. Yeah, that was also a bad decision. To by me, that's just not fair. Yeah, think. So yeah, no, I agree. No, I, I think Laviolette was a is a good choice for the Capitals, and I think it's going to make the Capitals much more uh, of a dangerous team, especially against the Flyers, and especially with what Laviolette's going to bring. I was going to say that would be like if uh, Buffalo, who has Kruger, who's a very solid coach that also knows a lot about soccer, but uh, that's a different story. Um, who's a very solid head coach. And then they got rid of him. And if one of us wanted to be a coach, like, by the way, you're the coach of Buffalo now. It's like, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, no, no. yeah, no. Oh, no, that, yeah, no. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, you Why do you think he'll listen to me? Like, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> no. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. that's, that's my take in, on, on there. Yeah. I, I, I really hope it works out for Lavi because I really like Lavi. Yeah. Uh, so. I guess okay, I the fact that I'm a Philadelphia fan, actually, yeah. no, don't, don't, don't work out. It's okay. Yeah, see, you know, secretly we'd have to say don't that work we're out looking that for that. Much. Yeah, right, you know. Be, be just 
enough to be behind us. Yeah, Western be finals, then, okay, that's enough. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you know. <laughs> just be good enough to be just behind us, you know, so we'll take that all day long. <laughs> and and speak, speaking of being good enough, uh, we're going to get into some some real good stuff here, too. Uh, this was uh, week two of the NFL, and uh, we're going to get into some of that uh, conversation now, too. The first game, uh, we'll start off with the uh, the Thursday night game, and the Browns did just enough to beat the Bengals 30-35. to 35. And... Um, uh, I'll tell you what, Mayfield only attempted 23 passes, and uh, he completed 16 for 219 yards. He had two touchdowns and a pick. But it was really the Chubb and the Hunt show. Um, combined, all day, they had 210 yards. So uh, there, there was no defense in this game. It was all offense. Joe Burrow, number one draft pick, looked amazing. Um, he did throw 61, had 61 attempts for 37 uh, completions of 316 yards and three touchdowns and a few runs. But that but, for your second game, throw it 61 times, kid. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, who else you got on the team to throw? To? I mean, he, they they have everybody to throw to. But throw, by the way, second game, number one draft pick, throw the ball 61 times. Second game, he looked really good though. Mm -hmm. All things. I mean, second game, the kid looked good. I mean, he he was a not the number one draft pick for no reason at all. Okay, this is one of those one times where I think the number one draft pick is actually going to come to fruition. You know what I mean? Where so many number one draft picks just fall by the wayside. You know what I mean? They they see like they're going to be good, but yeah. then they just kind of go away. He's the only reason they lost by five. They would have got spanked if Joe Burrow did not play as good as he did. That wouldn't yeah. have been close because, yeah, Mayfield didn't throw a lot, but he controlled – with the, he had that swagger back to him, which got him the 110, yeah, 110 rating at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah which yeah. actually beat Burrow's rating, but you're automatically going to beat a quarterback's rating oh. when you 20 times to 60 times. Unless it's a guy <laughs> that's like 49 and, and, of 60. And he throws two touchdowns. Uh, which, you know, yeah, yeah so. a historic <laughs> NFL game at that point. Um, exactly. So, Plus the fact that you have your two running backs uh, give you but, 210 yards could be combined between them, you know, well, plus well, plus well, three well. catches for another for another twenty three yards. That's three touchdowns right there for them two guys. Yeah, they have so. two pro potential running backs on their team. One that's only on their team because of stupidness off the field, and then another that uh, is on their team because they got him themselves. Huh. Mayfield played right. more contained than you usually see from Mayfield too. Actually, it looked like he was actually he was more manager. Yeah, he actually did play pretty uh, relaxed more than you ever seen him. Play. Even in his rookie, good rookie season, he did not play that relaxed. Yeah. Coaching changes will do that for you. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Well, that was the first game. That was on Thursday night. Now we'll get into the the Sunday's results here and uh, some of the games that uh, we're going to talk about today. You're going to see a underlying theme here on some of them. So the first one here is uh, the Ravens pretty much uh, dismantled the Texans, thirty three to sixteen. Um, it was the uh, Lamar show uh, once again, um, only this time he was allowed to finish the game. Um, he wasn't pulled uh, the end of the fourth quarter there like he was in the first game. So, uh, but look, let's face it, the Texans are minus uh, their big weapon there on the, uh, on the receiving core, and you can't allow 176 yards and then allow the QB to do another 54 yards rushing. I mean, that's just going to – it's not going to be a good day for you. So, uh, Ravens take care of the Texans. Um, Edwards also had a very good game. Yeah. yeah. Gus, uh, Gus Edwards, who's from Rutgers, which is not too far from me, uh, yeah. had, a very, had a very good game, and so did Ingram. So yeah, and so yeah. did Dobbins actually. Dobbins, a yeah, their running attack was great. Yeah. All three of the running backs did good. Yeah, yeah, including Lamar. I mean, but it was just yeah. basically, yeah, you can't give up that kind of yardage. Uh, you know what I mean? And expect to win. Um, now, now the game that definitely means more to me than anything, and that's the Steelers. Uh, we beat the Broncos twenty-six to twenty-one, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we had some rookies step up and make some good plays. And our patchwork O line looked pretty pretty decent. Uh, didn't allow for Ben's uniform to get too dirty, and Big Ben stayed upright for two touchdowns. 
So all in all, that was a pretty good game. Uh, we did kind of let Denver get back into it there at the end. Uh, we did lose uh, some players in that game, uh, which we'll get into here at the end of this. Uh, to injury, Drew Locke went down with a shoulder injury, and Sutton was lost also with an ACL uh, and during the they game. They also so, said it looks like Driscoll will start the next two weeks. I just Well, yeah, that. yeah, 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 because uh, – uh, Drew, uh, Drew Locke. Locke has got a shoulder. Yeah, that could be two to six weeks. So it depends on how how that heals and everything. So um, it's good. They for said them. it's a sprained AC joint or something. Yeah. He landed on his shoulder or whatever. You know what it's I mean? good for them that he um, looked very good because uh, Driscoll, we know during college, did have a couple maturity issues. Uh, where now uh, he, he seems looks good. He looked good. Becoming a pretty solid backup quarterback. Now, can you carry that through if you have to play six weeks? That remains to be seen. If you have to play two, that's one thing. If you have different, to play six, right. that's completely different. But see, you know, that's the thing. Backup quarterbacks, you're not really made to come in and be, you know. Right. I was just going to say, because <laughs> that's the perfect segue, because that's the next game I want to get into. And, and I'm sorry, Eagles fans. Well, uh, Joe was actually talking about the difference between a number one and not a number one is uh, a number one has to be able to find ways to win. And they're going to hurt. They're going to be sore. There's going to be a lot of things where a backup generally becomes a backup because they can't do that. They have a skill set, and that's the only thing that their skill set will allow them to do. And the, it's, it's all about adjustment, right? Exactly. And coaches are – that's why you have backups in there. That's why they pay the money that they do for backups because – you need to have a guy that can come in there and manage your scheme, manage your playbook, and manage your, your um, game day, uh, your game plan, and, mm-hmm. and take care of things. You know what I mean? That's all those backup quarterbacks really need to do. And, and Driscoll came in and played really well. You know, and, and I, I'm sorry, Joe, the Eagles, oh, they took one on the chin this week, buddy. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. We, we, we were rooting for you, man. We, 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 were, we were shooting for you. But loss to the Rams, 37-19. to 19. Um, We'll just look away. Uh, we'll pretend like this didn't happen. And, and the 0-2 start was – we'll just pretend like it didn't happen, right? Should we go that way? Yeah. Just sort of well, like I mean, this. Golf, I've always liked golf. I also thought that they were going to lose. I went into that game going, we ain't winning this game. Uh, so, I like I, – I honestly did not think we were going to win that game. Um the the whole yeah you're flying west thing that's a bunch of baloney teams are three and zero that flew west in week one they're two and one in week two so if you're a better team you're still a better team whether you're playing at eleven o'clock in the morning technically or, or one o'clock in the afternoon yeah, yeah because of your time clock in your head whatever so usually the better team is still going to come out on top exactly and that's what happened in this game henderson who's a very uh really making a name for himself as a running back a daryl uh did yeah. good round did good again and uh, you had plays too that would have gave you more momentum because cup never fumbles and he fumbled and like they, the eagles just have no backbone right now that's the pro- yeah. anything that comes at them they don't have an answer for and either does the quarterback uh, yeah. You have a 56.5 rating when you're getting paid $110 million. That's disgraceful. <laughs> I would have to say yes on that one. You know? uh, so, Whew. yeah. That's, you, yeah. Do you, you see a, anything Do you see anything good coming out of the Eagles this year? I, I, I thought going in, which I got into an argument with Andrew about, about a week ago, um, we are a nine-win team at best. Right now. So yeah, I don't. I, that that doesn't really come right off as. Uh, yeah. oh, two, you that's can, a tough nine win team too. That's that's going to yeah. be tough to get those nine wins. Someone find a way. Well, yeah, that also depends if Dallas can figure out how to play a football game more than just in the last three minutes. <laughs> so, because you still ain't getting anywhere doing that. So, you know. That no, also, no, no, no. And uh, that also factors. And also, if the other football team that they're playing doesn't completely blow a kick like the Falcons did. So, I mean, you know, like you're allowed to pick up the ball as the other team before 10 yards. Yeah, the exactly. Other team isn't, but you can. Yeah, and exactly. Just, that was like a pro ball play where everybody, <laughs> everybody was like, no, don't touch it. Don't touch it. But, <laughs> keep away. Keep away. Don't touch but, it. No, 
but realistically, the Cowboys, with the way that game ended, deserved to win that game, and Atlanta yeah. deserved to lose. They did everything yeah. to make themselves lose. <laughs> In this no, 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 yeah, no, no. That's that's perfect because uh, they came back from being down uh, to to beat the Falcons forty to thirty nine. There, uh, the, that was the nail biter of the day. Uh, a lot of bad calls in that in that game too. And Dak, man, holy moly, that boy was just throwing the ball all over the place. I mean, man. Okay, uh, he played up to his uh, franchise tag money because he's getting uh, what thirty point eight million yards. Yeah. And three. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's that's impressive. a big that yeah, that's a pretty big game there, man, for sure. So uh no, I agree with you hundred percent on that one for sure. So um the Cowboys were able to take care of the Falcons. Um speaking of taking care of nail biters and stuff, how about the overtime game? The Chiefs coming mm-hmm. back with a fifty eight yard field goal there at the end to uh to to take care of uh the Chargers tw- twenty three to twenty. Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, third and 20, and he runs 21 yards for the first down. I mean, he had like five or six plays like that last year during the playoffs where they were third and and 18, third and 26, third and 25, something stupid, crazy like that. And he just does these plays like, okay, it's third and one and whatever. That's a good point, but I think everybody expects greatness out of Pat at this point. It's not surprising to see him do that anymore. It's almost like, yeah, he picked up a third down at 21. Uh, whatever, That's <laughs> he's Patrick Mahomes. Um, the, the first touchdown that they that he got back was just like the, the, the play he made in the, in, the, uh, in the Super Bowl where he just, just chucked it over to the guy. Yeah. You, you know, the, like he, he don't throw the ball like that. He just I chucked it to him. him. We have showed at least offensively, especially with Kelly, that fourth round, I believe it was a fourth round pick, of Joshua Kelly from UCLA seems to be yeah. up in and out pretty good. He played really good along with Eckler. And also, like I said beforehand, uh, Justin Herbert didn't know he was starting and then played up to the best. Agreed. If you come into your first start, he threw one pick, but if he didn't throw that one pick, but honestly, he still played really well. Yeah. The Chargers might have won that game, honestly, if they if he didn't throw that one pick. Yeah, I agree. So, I and agree. that's not on him either because he's a rookie. He went twenty two for thirty three. The pick was on him, but I'm saying that he's a rookie guy. Got forced into playing literally the equivalency of Jordan in football. So yeah, that's yeah. a tough first game. People call Mahomes, so that's not an overstatement because every you've seen multiple tabloids call and different articles call Mahomes the Jordan of football. So. The Can't argue that. 311 yards, though, for Herbert. And then he did take two sacks, but this is the Chargers. you got to expect to take a couple sacks when you play for the Chargers. Yeah. Uh, he had a 94.4 rating. He played very well, and he also had a rushing TD. So, yeah. yeah. Good Sorry, game. I love Tyrod Taylor and always feel bad for how he can't find a place that he actually can play. But sorry again, Tyrod, I don't think you're playing again. <laughs> okay, but see – Here's the thing about Tyrod Taylor, though. If you're really just not that good enough and everybody else in front of you is playing better. Well, the thing with Tyrod is, though, he doesn't turn it over. So if you okay, want to well, back that doesn't turn it over, like unlike a certain – Okay, but <laughs> – No, I agree with you. No, I agree with you. You know, ball, ball security is definitely a, a huge thing here, um, you know, uh, but – Let's uh, continue on here. Uh, we can say that uh, Tampa Bay looks like they get their first victory from the Panthers, thirty-one to seventeen. It feels like like I I sense sarcasm in your voice there or something. What are you talking about, <laughs> man? Sarcasm? <laughs> no, man. He can. I, I I am so happy to see Tampa Bay lose. Yeah. Well, first of all, Carolina's done. Well, speaking of that other team, they're done. They're done. So McCaffrey's out for. Right, four to six yeah. weeks, or yeah. the, the, they ain't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So whatever, whatever they, they had, had or whatever they thought back, they you had, know. or uh, you know, Actually, Teddy Bridgewater. I, well, who I call the best running back they have out. But then I agree. I agree. Um, Teddy Bridgewater uh, starting for um, Carolina Panthers, and then uh, Cam Newton, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tom right. Brady starting for the uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and it was his first win. So uh, you know. I, I I attribute it more so to the fact that 
uh, the Panthers really just have McCaffrey right now, and they don't really have much of anything else. Because um, I don't, I really don't think that Teddy Bridgewater is the answer. I think they should have kept Cam Newton, but that's just my that's just my opinion. Bridgewater is you know, a game manager. Cam Newton can be a game changer. That's exactly, true. exactly. And you need to have that. You need to have that balance because you can't just have one. Everybody focus on McCaffrey. Yeah, and well, the other exactly. thing is Brady didn't do great. He still fumbled. He only had an eighty point three rate. I know. And he only threw what, like thirty five? Yeah, he threw thirty five yeah. times and had a touchdown and a pick. This right. is just four straight game with a pick, and we're talking about Tom Brady. Yeah. You would think well, we're talking about Jameis Winston. People should have realized that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a new, t- it's all new receivers, all new everything. Uh, oh, it yeah. doesn't matter though because the other games were last year. So, right. like, he started looking bad. One thing that me and Max Kellerman That's might true. actually That's agree true on too, is the fact that Tom Brady. It's not a cliff. He was wrong on that. But since he revised his stance to he's in a ravine decline. I would agree with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's just steadily getting worse instead of, course, yeah, of just dropping off. Of you have to have a piece. <laughs> okay. Like, All that, right. That. I'll buy that. Now All right. I'll buy that. Yeah. Is he retired yet? Is is Tom Brady retired yet? Because I, I just, I, I'm sorry. Is he retired yet? <laughs> Did I say that? I said that out loud. All right. Anyway. So how about the, the 49ers, man? They pounced on the, the Lev Bellis Jets. Uh, to the tune of 31 and 13. Um, however, however, after looking really good early, Jimmy G left the game with an injury, and then we also lost Nick Bosa in that game too. Is there anybody so, left in their dressing room after that? Oh, you mean you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, two of their yeah. body bags all over the place. It, it looks like uh, it looks like Nick Bosa is going to be down with a uh, with an ACL, and yeah. then I think uh, Jimmy G is going to be down for a couple weeks too. Uh, with an ankle, I believe yeah, is that the what high ankle sprain. Yeah. yeah, so that depends on the degree sometimes, and then you have to wrap. Like, you're not going to play the same because you have all that wrap that looks exactly. like exactly yep. about mm-hmm. to go into war on your <laughs> on your leg so, and ankle yeah. and everything, so it doesn't move or nothing. You know, yeah, trust me, I've had one of those, and they they are not fun or pretty or nothing like that. So, uh, but man, that that uh, even though they put up 31 points on. Uh, on the on the Lev Bellis uh, Jets, um, I, I tell you what, that's two guys go down, two big names go down. So that that's kind of, I mean, are you are you, are you seeing the running issue going on here? I mean, I yeah. think so. How about uh, the Jaguars and the Mustache Gardner Minshew, three touchdowns uh, going up against uh, Ryan Tannehill. Uh, boy, they lose the heartbreaker to the Titans, man. Tannehill with four TDs, 30 to 33 on that one. That was another close game there, too. And no defense? Minshew yeah. had three TDs. Tannehill had four. Well, Gardner also had two picks and a fumble, though. So they True. did play. Tennessee did D him up a little bit better than uh, he did. Jacksonville D'd up uh, Tannehill, right. which was basically right. nice. And, and Henry, <laughs> Henry wasn't quite nearly as effective, but. Yeah, them being up Tannehill was basically just non existent. <laughs> it was like, oh, look, there's a guy that I can throw this right through the head, through the needle for into this guy. Like when you have 145 and seven passer rating at the end of the game, <laughs> uh, the, the other team's defense did not have an answer for you whatsoever. And you yeah. basically, were like, yep, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Okay, great, we won. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, we got the Bills take like, the uh... Seat, uh, winning. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah winning. Winning. <laughs> Let's break out your tiger blood. Speaking of tiger blood, uh, the Bills beat the uh, <laughs> the Bills beat their uh, division interdivisional rivals, uh, the Dolphins, thirty-one to twenty-eight. That was a close one. The Vikings lose to the Colts, twenty-one to eleven. That was uh, what the second game yeah. there for for uh, Philip Rivers there for the Colts looked pretty good in that game. So uh, Lions get housed by the Packers, forty-two to twenty-one, and woo, housed indeed. Um, Cardinals beat up on the team from Washington, thirty to fifteen. Uh, this is what I wanted to get into here. Um, One thing, we, though, on the Bills, I wanted to shout out Josh Allen for having the best week as a quarterback. He does get trashed for no reason sometimes. So he is a good quarterback. He is and I really like the Bills picking him up for thirty-five, four seventeen yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, and a 147 rating at the end of the day. That's almost perfect. 152 is perfect. 152 is perfect. You almost had a perfect passer. And exactly. he was making throws where there was no blocking. 
He was making yeah. throws where he literally went this way and then went, okay, cool, now this side's open. And then literally ran across the field and would just launch it. <laughs> and make a perfect, like, that, that was right. the one question with Josh. Can he get accurate a couple years into the league? Well, Yeah, and running outside question. the pocket, you know yeah, what I mean? And, and can he make the throws on the run consistently? Exactly. Yeah, well, both exactly. of this game at least answered those questions. Exactly. But what I wanted to get into with this whole thing is this. We've lost some big names this week. And some of those big names were Saquon Barkley is done for the year with an ACL. Uh, they they lost to the Giants or to the Jets. Or I'm sorry, to the Bears, um, 13 to 17. Uh, we also lost um, Nick Bosa with an ACL. That he's done for the year as well too. Um, so that seems to be a running theme here. We also lost Sutton from the Denver Broncos with an ACL as well. And too. we also might have lost Bruce Irvin on defense. Seattle yep. worries that. Uh, linebacker Bruce Irvin tore his ACL, but they're waiting for more to confirm it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, Drew Luck's down. You know what I mean? Jimmy G's down. Uh, we got a lot of guys down this year, and I attribute this specifically to the fact that there was no preseason. It was predicted. That's what was predicted to happen. Uh <laughs> Preseason's yeah. there for a reason. If anybody says, oh, what do we need preseason for? I mean, it's, to it's ridiculous to think to not have a preseason, especially in football. You, I think you could get away with it more in hockey, to tell you the honest truth, than football. Well, they did. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they went from four months of nothing. They gave them, what, 28 days, and bang, they were playing round-robin games. Pretty much. But football, like, oh, I've had this debate with, I'm being from Canada, the people ask me, what's the toughest sport out there? And I'm like, for one game, Hockey. it's football. No, football. One game, football. Oh, one game. Over the course of a season, you might be able to say hockey. But for one game, nobody takes more abuse than football players. That is a freaking unbelievable sport when it comes to the abuse. that. So, And if you're going in relatively cold with all the – with all the things your limbs got to do in a game like that, man, I, I think it's absolutely outrageous. I, I would say it might be football now in general because hockey's also more of a skilled game nowadays than it was when I first started watching hockey as a kid. Like when I first started watching it as a kid, you had more of a mix of let's just destroy you uh, like with like run over you, and yeah. Where nowadays you have way more skill, skill, skill mixed with guys that can destroy you, but they also have skill. You don't have any Riley Cotes running around anymore, really. You don't have any Donald. <laughs> like, you don't have a lot of those guys anymore that don't. Have, because even Reeves, he has skill. Ryan Reeves in the playoffs, Pot yeah. goals. He's not just someone that's going to go around, like, whipping you and beating you up. Like, that's not. So, he actually. You're has, not taking the impact in hockey. You never have on a regular basis in one I game. see. I like, disagree. Like, certain especially certain positions in football take I, some of those hits taken by receivers and stuff is if it happened in a game people would be like okay he's done i Seriously. think the most comparable position in hockey to football would be center because if you're playing center you're getting slashed on the face offs uh you're going to get body checked during the game and have to check somebody and if you're someone like bergeron you're going to be blocking shots and doing all that good stuff so yeah. if you, that that might be because even on defense, you're still playing defense. So depending the style of defense you play, you might be a four-checking defenseman, not a Robert Hag that's bodying people up. So that also, that's why I think center would be the most because you're getting slashed on every face off. That's why Giroux had a couple hand injuries. So same with yeah. Lord when he went back to playing center, yeah. got a hand injury. Hand injury. So same thing too with JVR. Uh, other than that, I've I, played all the positions, and I'll tell you, you get the same abuse pretty much. It doesn't matter. Well, no, I'm just so, saying you get extra at center because you're not taking a face off as a defenseman. True. Yeah. Or you're not so taking a face off. You're blocking more shots as a defenseman, though. You are doing that, yeah. So I played center for football, and I also played on the defensive line as a nose tackle. And I'm going to tell you something guys that play hockey are in way better shape. Than guys that play football, in my opinion. Okay, this is just my opinion. Now, I played football for over 10 years, okay? And I've seen guys in some sick shape and see guys do some incredible things with weights and 
just blown away by what these guys could do, okay? But when you have to skate back and forth up and down 200 feet for more than an hour every single night, and then you're getting slammed into boards that have no cushion, you're getting slammed against other people that have very little cushion compared to a football player who's wearing these really thick shoulder pads, really thick helmet, really thick thigh pads, knee pads, waist pads, chest pads, rib pads. I'm, come on! Yeah, I would agree with that more if we didn't upgrade the equipment. The fact that hockey equipment is getting as safe as possible nowadays, it's getting closer to the football level of equipment. But agreed. It's, the speed in hockey now compared to before is so much more so tougher. It's uh, so much more faster than what's going on in football. Look, I, I'm it's here to tell you faster because that's the reason why there's less physicality. The speed and skill asset has brought less physicality to the game. When people were slower, it's easier to hit somebody that obviously, yeah, what <laughs> than it is to hit Steven Stamkos at full acceleration, yeah. trying to catch him going down the ice when he's not yeah. in. Uh, yeah, no, but, I'm with you. So, like, or point. Try to try to catch up the blade and point to hit him. Yeah. Unless if he keeps himself or, or McDavid or anybody. Nice role game. You yeah. Hit. <laughs> so. Exactly. I don't know. But, I, I no. I see what you mean though, because the football players have much more of an impact when they play. They they, they take impacts at a at a higher at a at a higher impact level than most more often than in a hockey game. We do have hits yeah. like that. But yeah, they're not yeah. at the consistent level as a football yeah. game. Now, yeah. over a course of a season, I may say hockey because you play in 82 games, back-to-backs, all of those sort of things like that. That's not the same in football. But in one game, yeah. football is pretty Okay, insane. maybe. Maybe one game. Okay, I, I could see that. But we, we did lose a lot of guys this, this week, and I think that's attributed to the fact there was no preseason. And we didn't see a lot of defense this week either in, in a lot of the games where the teams were scoring more than 30 points. So I think that's another issue as well, too. That's another uh, as far as, thing, because your defense has to get in sync with each other. Exactly. So you, the more time you spend on the field with each other, look, I'm a firm believer in the best way to get better at playing football is to play football. And that means putting a helmet on, putting shoulder pads on, and getting dirty. Sorry, yeah. just how I see it. Okay. So speaking about getting dirty, uh, we got the Saints and the Raiders for Monday Night Football, and that should be, well, yeah, that should be an interesting game. I'm pretty much looking for the Saints on that one all day. Uh, I don't really see much going on for the Vegas Raiders. Yeah, like I, don't I said it correctly. Saints are hefty favorites in that game. I think they'll win. I don't think they'll win by much because they didn't play like the Saints. No. They played a good game and won. Well, yeah. they played a solid game and won is probably the better way to put that. I wouldn't know. I don't I know if I describe that yeah. as good. Um, I agree. No, but, no, I agree. Uh, I agree. Hundred percent. And Drew, th- that might be the first game I've ever seen Drew Brees show that he might be aging. That I, uh, never- I saw a couple games like in the last two years. I've seen a couple games where I've seen some chinks in his age, where he's just looked like he's been a step off or just a slightly bit off on some of his a throws. A slightly bit of off, his... sure, but he was pretty off. And you never see Drew throw under 200 yards. Yeah, yeah. Drew Brees having a game of under 200 yards is, like, baffling. You're like, wait a minute, Drew Brees threw for less than 200 yards. What is going on? <laughs> Saints uh, are my like... favorite team, so. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. That's so go little... Saints, right? For a Good little day. bit longer until Brees is gone, I just, somebody, <laughs> some sort of, like, concoction to give him another 30 years with uh yeah right uh, good luck for that uh, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> why like eventually father time's gonna catch you caught up to brady a lot later than most it looks like it's catching up to drew well not looks like it is catching up to drew a lot later than most but i think the difference with breeze and brady is breeze because he's a smaller guy has always had to be overall slide the pocket better than brady Brady's never Brady had hasn't had to move around as yeah, much. He hasn't had to be a pocket slider because he can throw over people. Drew Brees can't Tall throw enough. Over. Right. Yeah, no, I so, agree. Um, yeah. Now he can because he wants to do it, but I don't know how he even does it because he can't see. Like some of the, so like some of the throws Brees makes down the field, I'm like how did he even see? Uh, yeah. But that, the the difference here is, I think a guy that also gets beat up in the NFL the most 
for usually no reason because his coaching staffs have been pretty bad uh, offensively, is also Derek Carr. Like when you look at Carr, he has had a yeah. he, he's had a staff that he had that he did a very good job with. Then they changed the offensive scheme, and I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Like the dude yeah, exactly. just had a great season, and you're going to change your offensive scheme. Yeah. <laughs> Where yeah. now Gruden came in, and he doesn't even he doesn't even seem like a guy that's obsessed with Derek Carr, but he's still putting him in the best situations. I'm which, not, I don't. Yeah, which, I know. I agree with you. Yeah, the guy had a pretty good um, first game. He threw for two thirty nine and had a hundred and seven rating. So, um, as long as you do what you got to do with Carr, you also have a. Booker and Jacob back there. And then Jalen Richard usually has spurt games. He's one of those running backs that kind of has a game all of a sudden where he really goes off. And then other than that, he's more of like a backup platoon running back. Yep. yep. So this game's going to be close, in my opinion. I don't think by any stretch so? of the New Orleans is running away with uh, this <laughs> game. I don't think well. New. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to give it as an odd thing because one, I knew one of your teams was the Saints. Uh, but two, the other side is I don't want to bet on a hundred percent Oakland winning, but I do think Oakland has a chance to upset. You mean Vegas or Vegas? Yes. Yeah, that's all right. That's well, okay because I almost called the Chargers. Yeah. I almost called them San Diego, so <laughs> it's okay. It's going to take a little while till we get it straight, but that's okay. No, I I, I agree with well, you though, man. Wide receiver at tight end. That's the thing that makes them what Darren Waller literally came up as a receiver. And then was like, okay, this ain't working as well for me. And then just went to being a tight end, and now is great. So, um, like, that, they have a pretty good team. When you get Gruden, the one thing you know you're going to get is smart yeah. people that fit into your system on your team. Are you going to be able to get a full team put together? That's more on the GM. But oh, he's got 10 years. Yeah, you're going to be able to get it figured out. At right, least. And, and Mayock, him and Mayock have got – you know, makes what uh, for four years, and Gruden's on for ten. So yeah. uh, we'll see how that works. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So, speaking of seeing how things work, we had some uh, college football receive some huge announcements this past week. Uh, the Big Ten has come out and announced that they are going to um, play football. Uh, they originally said that they weren't going to play football, and now they're going to come out and do a nine-game interconference-only schedule uh, that will allow the teams to qualify for the BCS. And also for the playoffs uh, at the end of the season. Uh, that also means that uh, we're going to see college football. Well, we got uh, Penn State, Ohio State is happening on Halloween in Happy Valley. And then uh, we also got uh, the, is it the Pac-12 coming back on Halloween potentially? The Pac-12 is the 31st or November 7th. It's okay. Soon. So they'll not, either come back on that same weekend or whatever, whatever, right? The next one, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it looks like we're going to have a pretty much most of the college football coming back, you know, at least for some of the uh, – at least enough to play – to qualify now, for the playoffs in the BCS. Fans and who's not having fans? That will be the next question. <laughs> well, yeah, because they they are still potentially postponing games and still potentially – like they they did – uh, postpone one game this past weekend and another game they canceled uh, because of the coronavirus and everything like that. So um, they're probably going to leave caveats in there to allow for games to be moved or rescheduled or things like that. But they're not going to have a lot of wiggle room. Oh, yeah, because- rescheduling and stuff. I'm talking about those. Some of these teams have let in like seventeen to 20,000, depending on the oh, uh, fans. load of your stadium. Oh, where, oh, oh. Uh, it's going to be – that's going to be the next question. Who in the Big Ten will allow people to show up? Who in the Pac-12, will, if anybody, will allow yeah. people to show up? Well, uh, I think, uh, Perlo, you were talking about before we went on the air that yesterday that there was a fan in one of the – one of the games that either he snuck in or something like that. And I believe NASCAR also did. Uh, they allowed up to what? I think five or 7,000 yeah. fans. Or, yeah. One event they did. And the, it depends what state they're in for that. Cause it right. depends if the state wants to allow it. Yeah. I yeah, like to and, put the charging for a ticket on that. <laughs> it's probably pretty outrageous to get a ticket to, to go to it that. Wouldn't that be interesting to see what the what the what they're charging for the tickets? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because let's yeah. face it, they're not they're not selling any tickets. Nobody is. You know what yeah. I mean? So 
But boy, all the teams that had TV contracts and all the leagues and everybody that had TV stuff all set up. Boy, are they okay now? You know what I mean? Like the NHL's done really well. Um, I believe that the NFL is is continuing. I mean, their their ratings have dipped slightly, but for the most part, people are watching the games. Well, you know yeah, I mean? they're doing well. But I mean, uh, fans make up about half their income, uh, their revenue. So there's a lot of like, as far as NHL teams are concerned, they're not going to be playing to the cap now. Apparently, like a lot of teams are going to have an internal cap in place that they're not going to spend. Uh, they spent four or five million under the cap to make up the revenue loss. So uh, that is going to be the other side there. of that is the cap staying until and the most they think it's going to go up from stuff I recently read is two million at most. Yeah, so that means you're looking at about over eight, the next two four, years, three four years. No, it's not going to go up at all for the next two, and then in that final, in right, that year, it goes yeah. up. Might go up to eighty-four million total at right. most, eighty-one point five right, right. now. Right, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. It's not going anywhere for the next two years, and then it'll go up. I think and two million. It could be eighty-one point right. five million. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and there's going to be a lot of teams, a lot of teams that are going to suddenly be uh, looking to have to to shed uh, players because they're going to be over the cap. Yeah. Okay. And that's going to be interesting next year for sure because Pittsburgh is one of those teams. We have a lot of guys that are coming up that are due to be signed and are going to be free agents after this season. And after this season, the cap is not going to go anywhere, and we're very much up against the cap right now. So Pittsburgh's going to have kind of the same issue that the Flyers are going to have where we need to re-sign a bunch of our own players and we're not going to be able to because we're not going to have the money. Are you talking about the Steelers or? Yeah, the Steelers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was just saying you said it, we. I figured you couldn't be talking about the Penguins. No, 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 no. The Steelers are going to have to be tied up against the cap like the Flyers are. The Flyers have a lot of players they need to re-sign, but don't have the money to do so because we're up against the cap so tightly. Pittsburgh's going to be in the same situation after this year. So this has to be, we have to do it this year because most of our guys are probably not going to be back after next year because yeah. we're going to be over the cap. That is a good point. That is a good point. One more thing before we move on, though, with college football. I just got this update. Joe uh -oh. Burrow's successor will be Miles Brennan to start for Louisiana State University. Oh, there you go. All right. Um, I've heard good things about that kid. Really good things I've heard about him. So it should be interesting to see how they go there for sure. So um, what a great pleasure it's been to have both you guys on here. Uh, we've been able to cover pretty much everything that's happened over the last week, right? So we got Monday Night Football coming up tonight. We got the uh, Game 2 of the Stanley Cup playoffs coming up tonight. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to have two screens. <laughs> I'll be watching at least – the Tampa Bay game, and I'll be checking well, on the money. There's a game. thing for people that don't know. If you have NHL TV, that's why I'm trying to tell Steve you should get NHL TV so you can use it all over instead of the center ice because you can't use that all over and it doesn't work half the time anyway. Oh, right. <laughs> because it's ran through a cable company rather than an actual company. Um, oh, okay. But the uh, NHL TV, you have at least a split screen. I never tried to do it with more than that, but also hockey would be hard to watch in a quad box. Uh, with MLB, you can do a quad box. Yeah, yeah but I think you can do that is, with uh, baseball. Is obviously a slower uh, sport where football you have stoppages too. Uh, hockey, I think it might just be a split screen, but that makes sense because watching four different hockey games in a quad box would not be the most easy thing to do either because hockey's a pretty quick <laughs> okay but i wouldn't put it past you professor joe i i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past you man i think you could watch four games what do you think perlo well i have watched four games at once See? <laughs> it's just difficult that's all yeah that's oh good. yeah i didn't say it wasn't going to be difficult i just said you could do it <laughs> you could do it it's just in a quad box too it's smaller so baseball. and it's really hard to yeah no no i've seen them yeah no, no yeah. i've seen them for sure so <laughs> <laughs> plug in your computer and then you let it quad box on your TV. Then that would work. But yeah, that because as long as you had like a big giant sixty-five inch TV or something, you know what I mean. So you 
<laughs> using HDMI yeah, and plug it. Through. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So thanks, guys, for joining us, man. Uh, we're going to try to do this show every Monday and try to have a, a, a sports wrap-up show here for you every every week. So that way you can just kind of tune into one show and and just kind of get a basic overview of everything that's kind of happened over the last couple of days, over especially over the weekend and and things of that nature. So stay tuned to this. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, Professor Joe, how can we find you and how can we follow you? Well, of course, you can find at steelflyers.com all our good information. And JJ Boric 26 is my Twitter. And Overtime Heroics and Pub Sports Radio, the other two I write for and do stuff for that are – not listed on there as of yet at least because i have to talk to people to see if that's even allowed to happen right but i'm sure if you do i'm sure we'll be able to get that taken care of for you no problem so perlo how you doing buddy tell us how we can follow you how we can get a hold of you thanks for joining us today yes thanks for having me um perlo's nhl pow is my twitter but you can find all that information over at steelflyers.com uh, fantastic website that's in the making right now, but it is up right now. You can go check it out. It's got some great stuff on there. You see Steel's podcast and all of our work there. Um, so I'm really excited for it. And uh, you will be too, I'll tell you. If you don't see it, you're missing out. Uh, that's where you can find me. And uh, thanks for having me, Steel. You got it. Uh, look for this show to happen here every week. This is something we'd like to keep doing so we can bring you all the all the best and all the truth that we can possibly uh, bring you here as far as all the sports is concerned. So just remember, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough. <laughs>